so good evening everyone um i'm karan from green essentials and i have yogita also here with me uh, we'll be sort of moderating and guiding the session which of course will be conducted by poonam and amar from daily dum um i'd like to start by thanking amog zainab and our friends at hasgeek who hel helped us set up this session and uh, we look forward to interesting stuff today from poonam and the daily dum team uh, today's session is you know a continuation of what we started talking about last week which is how it is that as citizens we can participate in the process of handling urban waste so you know for anybody who's living in a city today or even a town in india uh, urban waste is an obvious problem you don't even have to open your eyes you can pretty much smell it um i had a friend who used to kid that when we would take a flight from goa to bombay and maybe we were about 20 miles out he could smell it in a pressurized cabin in an aeroplane uh, while that may be pushing it a little far i think all of us uh, sort of come to face uh, come face to face with the unpleasantness of uh, our own waste uh, as soon as we step out at our, of our doors nowadays so so the question is how can we really influence this as at citizens because we waited for years and years and years and you know obviously governments both local governments and governments the national government haven't been able to influence change except in select pockets so that's really what these conversations have been about um, in terms of uh, the uh, this session itself it's different from the first in the sense that while we talked about individual household composting there we're going to talk about community composting now and when we say community composting we mean waste management at a larger scale uh, we mean that it could be an apartment complex which is where most of us reside now especially if we are in urban environments uh, it could be perhaps a, uh, a collective like for instance an office complex that wants to handle its waste so again generating large volumes of waste and struggling with uh, dealing with it uh, of course a huge part of this is actually just composting because as puna mentioned in the session last week uh, 60% approximately of the waste that we produce in india is still organic waste which can be composted and by eliminating that we you know reduce the problem to a much the waste management problem to a much more manageable level so uh, before i pass on to poonam and introduce poonam and everybody else involved i just request amok to put on a poll which we would like to see responses to these are questions that we have in order to just best better understand your challenges and what you find sort of difficult to deal with when you are managing community waste what are the concerns that you have this is what we want to know first what is it that scares you most about community composting is it the bad smell is it bugs and other insects that may arise as a result of composting or do you feel there are other health impacts um, if we can just vote over the next okay so what i'm going to do is now kick off the session um as i said the session will be conducted by poonam and amar and basically they through daily dump have been talking about composting for many many years now i think a decade and a half almost uh, they've been extremely influential i feel in changing uh, perspectives of people about waste and uh, i believe that in many ways they've shown a way in which we can individually and collectively sort of uh, handle this or contribute to the handling of this waste problem which i feel is extremely important to make us feel empowered right so in the last session we talked a lot about individual household things you can do to compost whatever half a kilo or a little more of waste that you may be producing in a day in this session we will talk about how you can compost at a much larger scale when you are talking about 40 50 apartments for example and the problems become different they become different not only in terms of the scale of the composting but also in terms of the management of people and their feelings about composting so i'd like to introduce punam 
and amar who is in particular what punam calls the aga man the person who will talk a lot in this session about how a community composting system can work uh, thanks so much for joining us folks and thanks so much amog and zainab for all the help putting this together hi everybody welcome to this session we are very excited that you guys are all here uh, thank you karan and yogita from green essentials karan and yogita are one of our oldest partners and our friends and we've journeyed through this whole 15 years together so thank you both of you and uh, thank you has geek for being our tech partner and helping us do all of this because we are not tech savvy at all i have uh, today with me uh, my team which is amar amar is like karan says the aga man of india he calls himself the aga man of india and the joke that we have in our um, office is that if uh, any community wants to compost amar is waiting to get them started <clears throat> and there's vedika from uh, uh, daily dump who's going to be recording and help you helping everybody on youtube with the responses and usha uh, who will be responding to all your chat questions so welcome again and i'm going to hand over like karan says community composting is a completely different animal from home composting it is actually completely different while the composting process is the same the dynamics are so different and all of us will know that if we are living in a flat even with 10 people each one has a different opinion and getting everybody on board to take a decision to uh, agree on something like this is one of the hardest things so over to you amar and uh, please do lead the session and we'll all be here waiting to hear about how we can all get started in urban india because like karan says again urban india is where all the flats and communities are going to become denser and denser and we need solutions for those uh hello everyone uh, it's it's great to be here and uh, again it's good to hear that aga man of india is <laughs> speaking to you guys now about community composting you guys are lucky and uh, i'm just going to share my screen now i hope i'm audible to everybody karan absolutely now i'm sitting back and relaxing you're extremely audible to me okay wonderful okay so uh, when we uh, say community level composting like kuna mentioned and i think you guys have already had another session on home composting uh things become a little different because what we are talking about then is one big community to come to a consensus that the waste that has been traditionally going out of it for so long and being taken to somewhere where they did not know and they had been spending some amount of money uh, doing it to completely change that system and now all of that waste will be actually lying inside the community so to speak and getting composted at one central spot uh be it You, you know in the in the in the driveway around the community or on the terrace or in the garden so that sometimes we see is is a big step for some communities and 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 coming to that consensus and actually deciding on composting at site has been uh, uh is is kind of like a challenge and a time consuming process when it comes to uh, communities uh, and that's what we've been working with and we are so lucky to have actually so many uh, apartment complexes and societies across india in different cities who are actually already composting and uh, what this presentation will tell you is what are the various things that are necessary to be in place for a community to start composting successfully and then after this we can move on to uh, talk about a particular product just to give an example of what a successful composting uh, a community composting product looks like and how it works so when we uh speak of community level composting in dairy dam the first thing we do is we divide your sizes because the context or the uh, of a small uh, 25 home apartment in bangalore would be different from a 100 home society in in, in delhi and, uh, and and then a 1000 home society with a limited space would also we would manage its wet waste actually very differently and there are different products to do that as well so we divide uh, the communities into four categories small medium large and huge as you can see uh, the picture on the screen and, and of course there's a traditional picture of a big pickup truck that has come to pick up uh, uh, garbage from the society and you can see lots of uh, uh, plastic bags and lots of mixed waste which is lying right next to it and people are, are putting it on the truck and then what we say is if your community needs to start 
composting, there needs to be five things that have to be put in place before you can actually begin the process. And this is all from our 15 year experience of getting communities to do it. Uh, first one and the most important one, of course, is segregation at source, which I'm sure you guys might have spoken of in the last webinar too. If you do not segregate, uh, uh, composting should not be started at that moment. You have to get your segregation in place first. Your community needs to uh, give its wet waste out separately from all the other dry waste, reject waste and electronic waste. And it needs to be kept in uh, separate containers without any sort of plastic bags and, or any kind of dry waste mixed with it. So that it is ready then to be put into a composter and to be converted into wonderful uh, compost. The second thing, of course, is space for installation. Uh, again, an important consideration. And, and we've seen, uh, we have communities who've actually done it so visibly and beautifully that you enter the community and there are composters right next to you in the garden. And, and there are people running around it and they've accepted it into their uh, daily living. While there are some communities where you do not find that luxury of a garden space or a, or a space around the driveway, then people do it on the terrace or some people do it in an aerated basement. Uh, but that space is necessary and uh, that space should be well aerated and it shouldn't be a dark and a dingy basement or a closed room or something like that. There needs to be a good amount of aeration when you're trying to compost your wet waste aerobically. Third thing, of course, is budget allocated. Composting, like any other uh, 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 thing, is a solution. And there are products that are designed specifically for it. Uh, that will enable a long-term success of the whole process in your community and will make sure that you compost seamlessly for many, many years without worrying. So uh, there, there's an initial budget that you have to allocate. And there's also a, a, a budget for uh, a recurring cost because uh, composting is essentially you're converting your food scraps into, into compost. So you have to add some amount of carbon, which is added in terms of cocoa peat powder and microbes powder. Coco peat is, uh, 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 helps to compost the food base. It's the source of carbon that allows you to do it and also absorbs a lot of moisture and, and makes sure there is no smell coming from the process. And the microbes are an accelerator that enable you to fasten the process of composting. Now, those two things are necessary because in, in, in city setups, say a, a city like Mumbai, where there's lots of different flats close to each other, you do not want that your composting system smells and people walking around or visiting the community or the people who are residents of the community to smell it and then get discouraged or stop doing it. So hence those two uh, consumables are very important. The fourth thing of course is the housekeeping allocated. Uh, uh, you need uh, people to run this process well, but it's not a very hard process. It's actually, composting is actually a very, very simple process and it's, it's, it's very natural. Everything, you know, composts uh, uh, eventually. But here we are just trying to do it in a controlled environment. If your housekeeping was already collecting food waste from your homes and bringing it down to the central bin or a container, now their job will go one step extra. They will bring that food waste down and they'll put it into your composting units, whatever kind of solution that you may be using in your society. And the fifth one is champions that manage. And that, that word champions is very, very important for us at you know, Daily Dump because uh, we really feel that uh, if, if, if a resident has taken the step to, uh, to uh, get everybody at the community on board with base management and to think about the environment, and they can't be bigger champions than that. And, and uh, we feel somebody from the community, it could be the association or, or somebody who's taken this step, uh, to just oversee the process. Because although composting is, is an easy process, we're just adding waste with uh, a couple of powders and it's magically turning into wonderful compost. But if it smells or if something goes bad, then the whole thing, you, we've seen it comes down to the main team who actually got the community started with composting. And, and, and people usually say, oh, this has been a disaster. Why didn't we even start it? Although it's a very simple problem to solve. And just by changing the amount of powders you're putting, you can easily solve it. So considering these five things are taken care of, you can start composting. And then where, does, where do we come in? Uh, we, of course, design products that help you do it. We have community uh, composting happening uh, in over 300 different communities across the country. Uh, and, and if you consider all our community composting products, there are over 500 different uh, communities that are composting with around 3000 composters. Uh, we give you advice uh, on how to do the segregation collection, help you design a system for collecting different kinds of waste and finally putting your wet waste into the composter. Training for the housekeeping staff, 
uh, we install the units and that we are able to do throughout the country now. And we obviously share best practices and examples that we've seen from other places. And talking of best practices, uh, now some advices on the first step. And these are just some miscellaneous advices that we would like to give before we plunge into how composters work. Uh, one is every apartment is different and every community, so to speak, every society, uh, it, it's in a different city. They have a different context, different kinds of residents who are staying there, different uh, perspective towards waste and sustainability. So design your own process of collection of waste and segregation of waste. And because your apartment may have your own unique needs. And in the pictures, you might see a lot of young people actually holding banners and going from door to door. We've seen that that works really well. And we actually, when we go to communities, we encourage people that if your segregation is a problem, please send the kids to each, we call them the waste police, and they should go to each and every door, knock on the door and tell people how to segregate if, if you want to solve that problem. It really works for us. And then knowing how, how others have done it, we need not reinvent the whole wheel when it comes to segregation and collection of waste in our communities. Uh, these are some images from our uh, customers where they, you know, uh, uh, collect e-waste separately, which is put into your uh, paper and kept into a separate box centrally in the community. And people can come put their uh, things like uh, mobile phones and other forms of e-waste that go bad into that. And then you, if you see, there are some steel containers. That's another uh, tip for wet waste. If every house has a steel container, it's easier to clean the house. Usually we, we find that people end up using a lot of plastic bags just to hold the wet waste. And when they give it out to the housekeeping, they just give it out the whole bag. And so if you are a hundred home community, you have hundred new plastic bags for wet waste every day. And which comes to uh, 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 more than 3000 bags every month. So uh, instead of that, if you use steel containers, you can just wash them They're easy to rinse and keep using them. And the wet waste is just transferred to the uh, containers that the housekeeping is carrying. And those containers you can see in this particular uh, slide. You can see that uh, people have developed their own sort of carting mechanisms where they can easily move the waste. Uh, they can easily segregate it. There are specified containers. And on the left, uh, you see a, a lady, she's actually holding the black colored garbage bag and walking down the stairs. Uh, that is a big no-no because if, if, if we manage our community's waste collection and handling like that, uh, the system will fail. There will, will be leakages. People uh, uh, will feel that the there's just too much waste around this, like Karan mentioned, you, it, it will be smelling uh, and things like that. So just pay attention to detail and design your own system. Uh, it is what we try to say. And then uh, this particular slide is, is an example of a pickup routine uh, 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 of, of a particular community. Uh, if you see uh, uh, on the top right, we've, we've mentioned three things, daily, weekly, and monthly. Now in a community, the daily door-to-door -door collection for off waste is recommended. The housekeeping goes to each door with buckets, collects the wet waste only separately. The wet waste and the dry is not collected uh, uh, at the same time. The reject waste is collected in a separate bucket and the uh, uh, sanitary is collected separately. On a weekly basis, your dry waste can be collected uh, uh, because dry waste is something that doesn't smell. It could be your cardboard boxes, your plastic bottles, or, uh, the things with, which you can actually store at home for a longer period of time and just give it out once a week. And monthly, maybe you can have an e-waste collection that can be done. And we've seen it, uh, especially in bigger cities in the country, there are NGOs working in every city to take out the uh, electronic waste uh, on a monthly basis. And those are the three things, as you can see uh, 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 in the slide, that a daily collection of waste is happening. And finally, the sanitary and the reject waste on a daily basis are the only kinds of waste that are being actually carted out by your particular municipalities. Uh, Wet waste is, has, is being put into the composters, if you see the top left of the screen, and the weekly collection is happening of dry waste and the monthly of the electronic waste. And then similar things can be done for garden waste also. Uh, uh, a lot of our communities actually have a lot of uh, 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 garden waste in terms of dried leaves or cuttings from our gardens and clippings. And even those things can be composted and need not be thrown out. Actually, we see a lot of people uh, burning dry leaves, which is a widespread practice. And especially in Bangalore, we walk around and see a lot of it happening. Please do not do that. Garden waste can also be composted. The only difference is the garden waste takes longer to decompose. It's a very open system. You're not putting it into a product. You're not adding cocoa peat here because the waste itself has a lot of carbon. You're only adding the microbes and you're adding water uh, on, on a regular basis. 
and you're putting it into the leaf composters and it takes longer usually at least six to eight months to become garden mulch and then you can remove it and have wonderful compost as well. So even that is uh, possible. Uh, this is just different kinds of uh, composting units that we've done over the years. We used to have a product called the Manthan. Uh, now we have a very popular product called the Aga, as you heard from my nickname before. Um, and then there's Leave It Pots, which is for smaller communities. We've actually also come up with another one called Gobble Max. And very excitingly, there's another uh, community composting product, which is on the way, which, which will be a bigger one than the Aga, and which will be coming uh, soon. We are hoping that by next month, we can have it out into the market, fingers crossed. And then on the rightmost side, you can see pulverizers. We at Daily Dump don't make pulverizers, but then there are these electronic uh, organic waste converters that are used for larger communities, say above 1,000 flats. Uh, but those uh, we recommend only for larger because when you think of hot pile composting or composting by the Daily Dump method, which I'll be explaining next, uh, the number of agas or the mantans or the leave pots you might need will be a lot more. And hence we recommend pulverizers in those cases, but then those are, you have to be very careful when you choose a product there and make sure that that is composting it and actually not burning the waste uh, that you're putting in it. Uh, so this is about the do's and don'ts of uh, composting before you actually plunge into the, uh, the process of actually doing it. What I will do now is, uh, regarding the aga itself, I'll do a small demo right away. I hope you can see the screen, Karan. Yes, we can. Okay. So this is, uh, so this is our uh, uh, composting product called the Aga, which we recommend for about 25 to 300 uh, and even apartments up to 400 have actually done it. Um, in, uh, an important thing to note is this is not an electric product. You can keep it anywhere out in the open, be it a garden, be it the terrace, uh, again, a driveway, uh, some space at the back of the community, uh, near the STP area. I'm just giving out uh, uh, some common places that people keep it in. And as you can uh, see, it says all good things come in pairs and so does the Aga. Uh, it's, it's made out of uh, HDPE material. The, uh, the height of the composter you can see is about one meter and judging also by the height of the person standing next, next to it. And the diameter, uh, the largest diameter of the product is also about one meter. And there's a reason for that also. When you're composting, uh, a height of at least one meter ensures that there's a hot pile that develops. The temperature rises enough so that the, the, uh, all your uh, uh, food waste can turn into compost within a stipulated amount of time. Uh, and you can see the orange door in the front. There's a similar door at the back. And, uh, and, and there's a door on the top to kind of load your waste in. Uh, so every pair of agas comes with a kit. Uh, on the right, you can see remix powder and microbes. There are two consumables that have that, that have been drawn. These are the ones that I was talking about. The, the remix powder is nothing but cocoa peat, which provides the carbon and the necessary uh, water absorption uh, to make the process smell free and faster and ensure that you get good quality compost within 30 to 40 days. And the microbes is just an accelerator that allows you to fasten the process. Uh, and uh, because the amount of waste in community composting is larger, we uh, recommend people to put microbes on a daily basis. And then there's a bowl for uh, removal of leachate, uh, which uh, during composting, some amount of leachate is produced because of the moisture inside your waste. And of course, there's gloves and rig for your staff to uh, use. When you start using uh, the composting unit for a community, uh, what you have to do is put some dried leaves at the bottom of, uh, of the aga. The middle picture that you see is the correct way to put it. Uh, the dry leaves at the bottom ensure that no waste sticks to the bottom. And uh, when your leachate actually flows down and settles at the bottom, it can easily be removed from the, from the tap. The next step is to add some uh, cocoa peat powder on top of the, the dried leaves and make a small layer of cocoa peat there. And then you can do your collection of wet waste from the community, which we spoke about in the previous slide also. Uh, when you are collecting kitchen waste, the container that you actually collect it in can also have some amount of cocoa peat. So by the time the waste is collected, it has some cocoa peat mixed in it. It also uh, helps to clean the bucket easily after the uh, waste is removed from it. And then the housekeeping person goes door to door uh, to collect the kitchen waste uh, from the community. 
And so you can see the image, the lady is going from different door to door and then bringing the waste down. And now the wet waste is collected in one central bucket and then you can add some coco peat powder hair itself into the bucket so that it homogenizes well. Then you open the top lid of the aga in the image if you see on the right and then you just pour your waste and the powder inside the, the, the unit and you just spread it out evenly uh, inside. And then you put some coco peat powder and for what we recommend is that for every one volume of uh, wet waste that you're putting into the container, at least half a volume of that of coco peat needs to be added as a layer on top of it just to ensure no smell and uh, faster composting and make sure it's well spread uh, on the waste and no part of waste is actually exposed. So when you look at uh, the material inside from top of the agar, you should see that there's a layer of uh, coco peat powder over there. And you can also add one spoon of microbes, which is like, again, I mentioned the bacterial culture that helps to fasten the process of composting. Now, as you're doing that every day, you're adding the right amount of waste and the coco peat and the microbes, you'll see that there is some sort of moisture that comes out from the tap in front of the agar. If you see the picture on the left, uh, this moisture is called leachate. Uh, this leachate is actually very, very uh, nutritious for the plants. It, you shouldn't waste it or throw it around. And actually, uh, if you throw it around the area of where the composters are kept, the area can start smelling. So you just collect the leachate, you dilute it with about 10 times water, and then you can just pour it out to the plants uh, uh, and help them to grow. Don't pour the leachate directly because if it is not diluted, it, it could just be too strong for the plant. And uh, these are some examples of places where even people have collect, connected the leachate taps to have one single outlet. Uh, you need not do this actually. It's, it's, it's much easier actually to just uh, keep the separate bowls for each tap and you can dilute the thing. But if, if the setup in your community is such that it is definitely required to join the taps and keep one single outlet, uh, it can be done as well. And, and then there's a side door of the aga, like I mentioned in the first picture. This side door is only open when your final compost is ready. And uh, we call it the harvesting of compost, the process of removing it from the, from the composter. And now talking of timelines, now each pair of these units, and this is a typical community composter, can handle up to about 25 apartments. So if, if say you have 50 families staying there, then you need double the capacity. So you'll need four units. If you have 100 apartments or 100 families staying, you'll need eight units. So that's so on the basis of the number of families or the number of people staying, we actually calculate the number of composters you need. So assuming you have 25 families and two aga sitting in your community uh, to begin with, you start off with the first one, put all the waste from those 25 families along with the powders every day, like you showed in the previous slides. You keep layering it and you keep filling it up to the absolute brim till the very top uh, where you see the top door. Then you go on to the second composter, do the same thing over there. And by the time the second is filled, your compost in the first one should be ready. And the total time that we're looking at of filling of aga one if you are putting waste from 25 families is about 15 to 20 days that's the average amount that we've seen and the similar amount of time you take to fill the aga number two which is another 15 to 20 days and by the time that is done you come back to the first one and you remove the compost which is shown in this picture and when you remove this uh, 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 compost uh, as this man is saying uh, you might find that if there was any kind of dry waste or any other forms of waste that was accidentally put into the, your wet waste itself that would not have decomposed at all. And it would just be lying here that you can just pluck out and remove. Uh, secondly, uh, if, if you feel this compost is too wet, then there could be a possibility that the right amount of coco peat might not be, have been mixed before. So at this stage, you can either dry it out in the sun or you can just mix more coco peat and just uh, put it out into, into jelly bags as well. Thirdly, if there are some things you feel have not fully decomposed, if there is a chicken bone or if there is a, 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 a corn on a cob or, or uh, any kind of say a, a, a seeds or, a mango seed or something like that, those can be put back into the composter for another cycle so that by the time they go through another cycle of composting, next time they can be uh, taken out. Actually, interestingly, in Bangalore, uh, what we also run is a compost pickup uh, or a compost buyback uh, uh, thing with our communities here where we actually pick up the compost that they produce on a monthly basis. Uh, we usually don't mind if there are bones or 
other things in the compost because all of that is calcium and it is actually really good for the uh, compost finding. And yeah, so this is basically the product and the whole, uh, uh, the design of the product is hot pile composting. There's actually a tower sitting inside the compost is that it's that is taking air in from the bottom of the compost and then spreading it throughout. Uh, so basically uh, you need like three things for composting for sure. You need your kitchen waste, you need a composter and you need an aviated place to uh, uh, start doing it. And then you can every day start layering your food waste with your powders and just uh, get wonderful compost at the end of 30 to 40 days. And like I mentioned, if you are a bigger community, say you have 100 apartments and you need eight Aga units. So you'll have uh, four units and four units, so two sets like that. And you start off with the four units. Initially, you keep uh, filling, dividing the waste and putting it into those four units every day. And by the time those four units are filled, which we are talking uh, 15th or 20th day approximately, you then go to the next set of four. And by the time you're done finishing the next set of four, you come back to the first set and you remove the compost from all four uh, units. Approximately uh, when a, a composter like this is completely full, it has about 300 uh, kgs of waste plus powder that has gone into it. But when you actually get the compost out of it, it's only about 100 kilos of compost. So there's a reduction of nearly uh, 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 60 to 70 percent in terms of the, the amount of weight that is lying inside the composter. And that 100 kgs of compost, of course, you can uh, uh, start using it in your gardens, feed it to the plants. They would love it, slurp it up and grow. Uh, and a lot of communities around the country we've seen do innovative things. They also donate the compost to the local park or, 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 give, or give it to somebody who has an organic farm. Uh, or, or try to send it out to other farmers in, in the uh, in or near their uh, society. So this is how the composting system works. Uh, Amar, if we can take a pause for a few questions. Uh, sure. Is that all right? Yes. So, yes. you know, I'm going to jump the line and kind of ask a couple of questions that I, I know that people often sort of ask us. Uh, right. So, you know, I saw a few questions where people are saying composting is difficult. And in my experience, saying composting is easy. It's the people who are difficult in some senses when you're getting to the community level. Yeah. Right. So it's not so much the technical aspects of how composting happens uh, and how the process works as it is in managing the expectations and, uh, uh, and, and sort of the, the attention of people who are trying to get community uh, composting done in their communities. So where in your experience are the biggest challenges, uh, you know, through this entire kind of uh, engagement that you have with them? Yeah, so, so, so Karan, when we look at uh, a, a process or a solution being sustainable, we want that it should, uh, our whole objective is it should be there for the longest period of time and require minimum level of intervention for it to keep on going uh, seamlessly. And uh, I, like you mentioned, it's, it is a big challenge of actually convincing the whole community initially that this is a safe thing to do. You know, we even get, even to the day we get doubts like, oh, is, if I compost in my community, am I going to get sick? Or is it like a health hazard that we are actually bringing it into our community and so much waste is going to lie around? People usually have, uh, there are myths around composting that, oh, are there going to be too many mosquitoes? Is, is it going to spread dengue or and things like that? So that is the first step where we get everybody together and actually break those myths. Uh, and that's where I, 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 I feel the champions, like we mentioned, people who actually gather people there and say, no, this is important. And, and actually, the, if you go out into the street, that's where the whole mess is. And that's what's creating uh, health problems in the first place. And this is actually a solution and a wonderful one at that and a very easy, fun and a visible solution that you have and, and long. Uh, been, there are people or communities that have been composting with us for more than 10 years now. And, and it's been working wonderful. Uh, so that's the first thing. But also, when you think of long term, uh, we find uh, associations change every year. Uh, and even your housekeeping people, uh, uh, you know, there are new ones that keep uh, coming in. So uh, over a period of years, we found that we have to keep going back to our customers and talking to them and saying, please continue. We are there to support you. And uh, sometimes we find that a new association has come up and then they are, they are just reconsidering the whole thing and they are finding that 
oh, let's just start giving the waste out again and, and maybe that will be cheaper. But then to convince them again, that's another kind of uh, uh, a challenge that we've seen. Uh, but uh, if, by just being proactive as an organization and speaking to our customers, I think we've been doing fairly well in getting them to continue to compost as well. So another question which follows up with, uh, you know, what you were saying uh, about new people get coming into the process, whether it is the people actually handling the waste or the, uh, you know, the committees and the associations that are coming in in a new year. So eventually, as we've seen it over the last 10 years, and I'm sure you see also, a huge part of the problem that has to be dealt with is social attitudes towards waste and social attitudes towards touching waste, if I can put it that way. Uh, uh, like, so how do these champions or how, how can champions like the kind you've described, who to me are just catalysts, uh, if I can use another word in this system, towards adoption within a uh, housing complex, how do they overcome these very strong or, you know, uh, sort of this apathy towards waste and wanting to deal with it because the easiest thing to do would seem to be to just get it out of sight, have it vanished, which you can do by paying a contractor to just throw it out, I guess. Yeah, I think it's, it, it's, it's a, uh, it, it's a balance current, but I've, we've also seen off late, for example, uh, we've seen a lot of policy changes also happen. Uh, we've seen that now the municipalities are also much more aware than, for example, I have a five-year experience in doing this. Uh, so from the time that I joined from and to today, uh, when we would do demos five years ago, we some, sometimes even had to explain what composting means and, and that such a thing exists, that everything in the world decomposes and all that. But now actually we start our discussion from uh, people already knowing that this is right there. You know, we've seen that the awareness has grown which is great for the system and it, it has grown because of things like Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and uh, we can of course always go into the nitty gritties of how successful the Abhiyan has been or whether it has been or not but in terms of the awareness definitely now it is there. Uh, we find that even young people now know that composting as a thing does exist. So, 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 so it has actually become easier for us to sell over the last uh, half a decade that I have seen it uh, uh, evolve. And, and as far as the champions are concerned, uh, some people are really motivated, we felt. We actually did a customer analysis uh, initially where we found out that I, even though there's been policy changes and people are still being told that you have to do waste management, otherwise you won't get a, a license or for your building and stuff like that. We found that 70% of our uh, uh, co uh, community composted customers last year actually just did it for environmental reasons. So it's a lot of motivation amongst our champions to get their community to manage waste better. And they usually do it through lots of, uh, and, some, and some people create lots of stringent rules in their community saying if somebody uh, uh, does not segregate waste, we'll charge this much fine. While, while others do it through slightly less harsher methods and they do lots of meetings and weekend uh, groups and talks and, and, and but it's, it's um, I must say it's a thankless job and we're so lucky to have actually met so many wonderful people. It's they just keep doing it. And uh, at the end of the day, they're just getting their community to compost and it's, it, it's, it's wonderful to see. And the last thing that I would also like to mention is because we've engaged with so many housekeeping staff over the years, the housekeeping staff usually knows a lot more about composting than the residents. And because we've seen say in Bangalore, most of the people we see in housekeeping staff are either people who, who hail from villages in and around Karnataka or Tamil Nadu, or people who have come from the Northeast uh, who, are, who are working as housekeeping in some uh, apartments. Some of them know the ins and outs of compost and how wonderful that material actually is because of their background. And actually, uh, uh, so the point of actually touching the waste and doing composting uh, by the staff I, it's not been that big a challenge uh, uh, as much as it looks on paper, I think. Interesting. So I'll just ask Yogita or, or perhaps, uh, you know, Poonam, if there are any questions that they would like to mention that have come in. Yogita, has any question come in that you would like to put up? Actually, somebody mentioned, T.S. Venugopalan mentioned that um, it's, I mean, it was an experience that she was sharing, I think. 
saying that um, that uh, that basically the the starting point is important because if you get it wrong at the beginning, then it puts people off, and then they are reluctant to try again. So I think the the five things that Amar laid out at the beginning that you need in place before you start. I think people jump the gun; they are excited perhaps or enthusiastic to get going. So I think. Um, their experience has been that they got off on the wrong foot and then everybody just you know backs off and says hey this has gone wrong we're not doing this it's smelling it's not working so um i mean other than those five things is there anything else you could you know go up and say to a community that look you need to get this stuff in place before you get going so that you start out on the right note um yeah so apart from those five things i wouldn't think there is anything else actually it's it's i mean if you if you're done with your segregation you have a space you have the people and you have and after that it's just left to attitude i think if you uh, and and of course the most important thing is the willingness to invest in a system or invest in a solution and to think beyond just uh, uh, how the system works and to to be able to see the bigger benefits of going for a solution and uh, uh, i think that's what i would urge people to see and say that if our society uh, is composting it's not only that they are preventing this much waste they're preventing so much carbon actually from going out they're actually, they're actually having an environmental impact which actually goes in tons of waste if you look at it from a yearly perspective and if you look at things that way and you look at the the whole longevity of it and say if we do this for 10 years we're actually going to save so much from going into the landfills uh, i think that would be a nice Uh, a way to look at things as far as the and it's all perspective you know we yeah. we've also done composting in uh, communities where uh, it fails and then literally everything that happens wrong in the community is blamed on composting you know that's that that also happens uh, you know some cloud would have burst from the sky and oh probably it's the composter so and and this uh, it, that's far fetched but it's it's so that's all comes down to perspective and getting everybody on board and uh, but it, it it's definitely improving and we've seen that it's the awareness and the willingness is increasing uh but it needs to be a lot more you can always look at things from both sides i guess i have another question um it's not from somebody but in our experience we found that there are a number of canteens institutions or restaurants especially here in goa that there is a level of awareness and they seem to be you know keen to take on composting because they're generating so much waste it's also a stipulation now from governments that if you have a restaurant of a certain size you cannot um you know indiscriminately dump out into the regular municipal system so uh, would you suggest something like an aga for them as well given that you know space may be a constraint or how should some of these people tackle it say a restaurant or a canteen Uh, so restaurants or canteens if it's manageable amounts of waste we have another product called the gobble max hmm. uh, i'll just put it out on screen as well uh, uh, but then there are restaurants where the amount of waste is a lot you are talking 100 to 200 kilos but the amount of space is very little hmm. uh, over there probably giving it to another business which actually picks it up and takes it to a central place to compost or we've seen a lot of restaurants and resorts actually giving it to piggeries which is been And and somebody in Bangalore was actually recently telling me that piggeries actually do is is like a blessing to the city of Bangalore because so much wet waste overnight is just taken out by people who run pig farms and it is taken out of the city, which if they were not, nobody knows what they would do with that much wet mm. uh, waste. But if it's manageable waste, say within about fifty uh, kilos per day, that we are talking cafes and restaurants where there's limited capacity seating and only a uh, uh, lesser number of tables. then the gobble max works and i'll just uh, quickly take out a photo and uh, probably show it to everybody okay amar there's also another question from neha uh okay. she says that uh, uh how can should a community with a lean setting okay. and not an apartment setting how should they work through the challenge of space and the other is also what are some of the points that one can use to convince the community regarding investment when they have been having easy with the garbage vans no hassle no effort and the garbage is already dealt with okay and uh, the other thing is can we reuse the compost instead of coco peat and other than 
the other than composting being partner really worried about biomedical waste from household going into landfill uh so those are the questions sure so to uh the first thing are you guys able to see the gobble max flyer yes. yeah yeah so this is the product uh, yogita that i was mentioning so it's mm -hmm. been and and as you can see it is designed in the form of uh, the usual the bins that are there in most of the cafes and restaurants that you see but yes. in, in inside the whole thing has been changed and there's a uh, stainless steel frame inside that enables it to be in different sections and the lower section composts so you keep adding 5 kilos of waste into each gobble max every day along with the same uh, coco peat and microbes and it fills up if you're adding 5 kilos it fills up in about 22 to 25 days and by the time the bottom most part you can see a door in the front you can open it and remove the compost so this is another product actually that we made uh, that can help out uh, uh, people and you can maybe uh, try to see if people would want to adopt something like this over there and, uh, uh, and 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 we also have a youtube channel by the way for everyone to see videos on all these products that i've been sharing and all this information is there on our website dailydump.org and coming to the questions uh, uh, punam that you mentioned I'm at the uh, questions are there in the Q and A, so yeah. you can directly look at them and answer one by one. Sure. So uh, the first one from Neha is how should a community with a lane setting and not an apartment setting should work through the challenge of space? So uh, by lane setting, I actually understand two kinds of communities. There are communities with uh, gated communities with lanes. Uh, over there, actually, the challenge of space is not there. You have enough space to put out community composting units. and you can actually do it lane wise and it's popularly in bangalore actually also called the lane composting where people are trying that each lane with a set of say 10 to 20 houses will have their own composter sitting at the end of the lane or sitting at a local park inside that community but if you're not a gated community you are an open uh, housing layout like we find in most uh, like even in uh, say small town india we find just open houses and big uh, communities where there's no gating system or anything there also the lane concept could work uh, uh, where you just need a common space which has been decided by the local association and you can keep putting your composters uh, the word the magic word again is decentralization the more you decentralize the solution the better the implementation will be you need to make sure that the waste be carted around the community is not carted too much and if it's a well laid out housing community you don't want people just still carry waste over long distances you can have composters close to each uh, area how can we reuse the compost instead of coco peat is another question uh, so it can be reused uh, uh, the compost itself has a lot of carbon content to put back as uh, additive uh, and we find that uh, we have some customers who after doing composting for about 5 to 6 months become experts at it uh those apartments and what they do is they mix their coco peat that they've been taking from us they take 50% coco peat by volume and the remaining volume they add as 50% compost but the compost of course that you are adding should be already of good quality dried and uh, uh and should not be a very moist smelly compost so so you, what i'm trying to say is that you need to get the process right first get the good quality compost and then you can start reusing it in the 50% uh, with your coco peat at best don't use only compost because coco peat uh, uh, absorbs water and that is kind of priceless because that ensures there is no moisture uh, sorry there is no smell when you are using the product and then the next question is other than composting being partner really worried about biomedical waste from house going in landfill how are cities how your city is handling that okay uh, so so in bangalore we have actually uh, <coughs> sorry uh, we have uh, registered organizations uh, there's one called maridi eco for example uh, who who have been given permission by the municipality to pick up biomedical waste and to know about such organizations uh, you can in your local cities you can actually reach out to some hospital and most hospitals are in touch with uh, uh, the registered vendors for picking up the biomedical waste in respective cities and you can find out your local vendor and they'll be able to come in pick it up uh, on a weekly or a uh, biweekly sort of basis and then the last question is we run a yoga center and guest house and have built our own leaf composters in the garden 4 by 4 meters and 1.5 meters high we have been adding our own food waste mixing again 
Uh, is this acceptable? Should we add coca peat or sawdust to the food bucket too and mix? We want to try out cost by investing in buying the new compost in this COVID time. Okay, yeah. Again, COVID times, I, I think that's always the elephant in the room these days. Uh, 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 so these are hard times. Uh, so yeah, you can have your own leaf composting unit. For leaf composting, you do not need to add coca peat or sawdust. Uh, just your leaf composters and adding, adding a bacterial culture uh, and water is enough. But if you're doing uh, wet based composting, then you uh, need th things like coca peat or sawdust and do it. So what, what you're doing right now, uh, on the screen, it looks fine, but uh, uh, please do share us pictures uh, by uh, WhatsApp. We have a WhatsApp helpline number, which is double nine one six four two triple six one. I'll also write it on the chat window and we can take a closer look at what you've built and uh, suggest you changes that you might want to uh, make. So, um, you know, speaking about elephants in the room, Amar, I think uh, one of the things that tends to happen with a lot of communities is that they need to basically, uh, uh, they need to consider whether they are going to use an electronic composting system. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I think I had a lot of background noise. Uh, so what we need, what compost, uh, you know, because societies can do is choose between whether they have, a, if I can call it a, a, comp a non-electronic composting system like the AGA, for instance, or whether they consider one of these more intensive uh, power, uh, powered or kind of uh, electronic composting systems like you had mentioned, right? When Especially when they are really large societies, right? Yeah. So I don't know. In you know, I've not used personally a mechanical composter that is you know using different types of. And when I say mechanical, I mean an electronic composter, of course. Um, but my sense of it is that there are certain challenges, uh, primarily in terms of things getting stuck, for example, bones or jamming the mechanism, and then you know them being a little difficult to uh, sort of resolve or solve repair in some senses and the other thing for the bigger composting systems where i've seen them used obviously it's the energy consumption and in my way of thinking about waste uh, the quality of the compost that actually comes out of them so do you have some thoughts on that and you know how societies can make uh, better sort of decisions about this i'd um, like to add something on that so Karan, this yes. uh, you know, what we must realize is at a slightly more a broader level, we, ha we are undercapitalized on the, on the uh, waste space. As a country, right? As a nation, we have not invested enough money. And I'm not, and not only, I, what I mean by money is we have not built infrastructure, we have not built capacity, we have not built an ecosystem. So what happens is, the small players who are taking the biggest risks, what is an organization like Deal Dump doing? We are trying to monetize an externality that is produced by society. Society has not taken the cost of throwing waste out and it's not put it into their um, capital books, right, of accounts. So we have gone to the externality and we are saying we will monetize it. Small players with less capital are always going to have a problem because the price point and the market readiness is not there, right? So the market will say, I want it at the lowest cost. Okay, when you try and put it at the lowest cost, so to speak, then what happens is you have to do some cost, you have to trade off on uh, how much you're willing to, the customer also trades off on how much they're willing to pay for service. So while mechanically and technically we can send a rocket to the moon, and we can actually solve a composting uh, product, say it's a machine also. If it parts break, we have the capacity to repair it. But that's not the point. We, technically, it's possible. But we don't have the, uh, the attitude to say we're going to invest in that repair. We're going to pay a fair wage to the man who comes to repair it. We are going to pay a fair wage for the uh, service. Whereas if I get a big L a CNC laser machine for my shop floor, I'm paying good dollars to get the Japanese to come and uh, uh, service it. So, so at a fundamental level, 
the the whole ecosystem is not it's under capitalist and therefore and when people ask us is a machine better a machine might be better but are you prepared to pay for downtime are you prepared for paying for uh, real costs of that and the power and uh, a, a, a fair wage to the person who will come because the person who wants to come has to fix it right so um, so those are the decisions so coming back to your question how do you make that decision if you make it from the corporate uh, lens of i'm going to make an excel sheet and i'm going to figure it out and if it if a computer network system works in my office then why can't this work in the same in the same way but you're comparing the wrong things it's not an orange and banana comparison you must understand that and this is the very fundamental problem we have when we go to communities and very often you're dealing with especially in a city like bangalore you're dealing with people who are very well educated they have very high um, well paying jobs in corporate their experiences are coming from corporate thing and uh, but they don't because they really live residents they are not really facility managers yeah so it's like a disconnect they so they don't apply what they've learned there and i'm trying to understand this industry but amir you can add your perspective this is always up to me and i wanted to say i have to you know say it no no definitely the the uh, similar things to what uh, punam said so this this whole uh, market and the industry is at a very interesting stage uh, uh, we've also seen over the last 4 5 years that the number of solutions that if you google just community composting the number of solutions that are available have increased a lot and in fact there's been a lot of uh, backlash from consumers and also by you know resident welfare associations because there were many machines that were made that would actually burn the waste and uh, back, uh, and, uh, and not really compost it or or kind of pulverize it and so there was this whole uh, uh, drama that happened and there were news articles and all that so what i would say is uh, i would urge the people who are here that when you are choosing a composting product please at least speak to three or four testimonials Uh, or speak to the customers of uh, uh, of the vendor that you are speaking to of different sites and ask them how their experience has been and uh, and if they face any difficulties and always uh, choose proven products because this market of composting is right now at a stage where a lot of people are trying different prototypes and this and that always is uh, uh, an ongoing thing right uh, uh, many years down the line that would lead out to maybe say a very different looking product and maybe we'll have things that make waste actually disappear in in 20 years time but uh, but till that time comes uh, please choose wisely and see something that has worked for a longer period of time and not just choose it on the basis of oh this is the capital cost for this this is the capital cost for this this one looks like a button if i press it something happens so i'll go for that that just shouldn't be the only thing that uh, 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 gets you to a decision you should look at how good the compost is whether it is usable is your housekeeping staff happy using that particular thing that you are investing in and speak to that guy i mean show him that one thing is going to be sitting here and you have to do these five things because even in the machines you have to take out the uh, the final thing that comes out the pulverized material and actually store it in different crates for about 20 30 days to compost it but overall as an industry we reached the stage where we have both kinds of solutions i mean daily dump can't cater to a 700 apartment block they have to go for the 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 machines and just try to see which one has been proven better in the market is what i'm saying no so at the risk of completely derailing what you were planning to go on to one last question uh, you know amar if i may uh, you know what punam talked about in terms of uh, you know waste management being meant being under capitalized uh, what you are mentioning about you know how people compensate for instance the people who work with waste right so i feel this comes back to certain social issues we have you know because obviously if you consider that a lot of those clients or residents are you know very well established in the world of business they are successful in that area you would think they would be able to apply those same set of rules to the situation it's very clear they don't and to my mind that is because of the social attitudes towards waste itself right so the first thing is that i think fundamentally we don't see waste as our problem we say waste as somebody else's problem uh, one being the government two being the maybe facility staff or the resident welfare association 
uh, three being the you know people who manage our waste in the waste system the informal sector all of us know how you know difficult that is in terms of how poorly they are compensated and how much risk they actually exposed to so i think it comes back to just being that i don't think waste is my problem i think that until i feel it is my problem i will not put value on the service that helps me kind of handle it right and i wonder if if there are ways in which you are addressing that or that you've seen other people be successful in addressing just that mindset and mindset in a uh, you know broader sense i know you mentioned that a lot of this has changed in the last 5 years of course since you began but it seems like we still have a lot of work to do um yes absolutely a lot of uh, a lot of work to do uh, we are talking of uh, when we say in delhi town we have about 500 communities and we have some 60000 odd people composting it looks like a lot of thousands but we are living in a country with billions and there's the, the market is really big and there's a lot of waste piling up every day there's uh, in bangalore say there are this 5000 tons of waste produced on a daily basis which i don't know how much the number has changed during the covid scenario uh, but yes it comes definitely comes back to uh, the same uh, 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 thing of attitude you know like you mentioned it being a social issue if today we walk out of our daily dump office and just go down 200 meters down the lane to a main road and just randomly st- stop a few people and ask them how they manage waste and do they know daily dump or how do they look at it people have no idea they usually say i i don't know where my waste really goes and when i i ask my friends also they i usually get similar answers so it is a big massive problem uh, uh that needs to be solved and uh, where we position ourselves is you now we are a design led uh company where we where we feel designing products uh, uh have an impact over a long term when people use products that enable them to see things differently when people engage with a, a, a company like us they see a, a lot of uh, 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 knowledge or they see a lot of material being given to them that actually makes them think about things from different perspectives uh, we feel that has a big impact and over a period of years it leads to mindset change it it also comes down to education and and, and in daily dump we've done a, a, a work on say curriculums and we've, we've been the first Uh, a learning uh, an experience center the one of its kind experience center for waste and sustainability in bangalore where people can come and actually see very visibly and engage with certain panels and uh, understand more about the ecosystem and similarly a lot of those things need to change like when we grew up uh, nobody in school actually told me about composting and i actually uh, got to know about it well into my 20s which is amazing i actually knew a lot about pythagoras theorem in school you know and it is a joke that another day has gone by and i've not used pythagoras theorem in my life and so so that so so there's uh, th- those issues as well and there are plenty of other people also kind of trying to address the social issue issues and uh, i should mention there's there's people like say hasiru dalal there's a there's an organization that primarily works with your waste pickers and tries to get them to become local entrepreneurs and at the end of the day the challenge is to get people to look at waste pickers and people who work in this space as experts because and actually a waste picker and a recycler or a kabadi wala is an expert on materials he knows what is the worth of a cardboard what is the worth of a plastic and what are the different kinds of plastic where are they going to go after it how much is one uh, thing going to be worth when it actually goes to the industry this is a there's just a lot of knowledge that those guys can take but it's just that we don't look at it that way so i would say education and i would also urge people to look at initiatives that are actually already working in different cities uh, trying to address that issue and but it is a mountain to climb yes yeah amar i have another question for you um yeah sb asks that can cow dung manure replace coco peat and also can cardboard and paper and dry brown leaves be used as a source of carbon at the community level uh yes uh, yes for both uh, just that when we talk of community composting uh, uh we speak big cities where lots of people are staying close by so if your community is up for using cardboard paper and cow dung uh, because what will happen is if you're using uh, say uh, shredded paper Or, or cow dung, or say sawdust for your this thing. 
um, it might not absorb the moisture as well and there could be some sort of smell and you might have to mix the whole pile very very frequently and manage the moisture inside it and manage uh, the taking out the leachate and removal but if you live in a very uh, if, if you live in a space where people are up for doing it and it's a big enough space and you have your composting happening where it's not a hassle to anyone please go ahead and do it uh, but if you are in an apartment complex in a city where there where people are going might question the output uh, and you might want to do the easier thing and just stick to coco peat and microbes yeah i think it also kind of uh, brings home to me that quite often we ignore the skill component in this and which is that when you start out composting most of us stumble even if it's for a single household using say a kamba or whatever it is right so i think there is a learning curve that helps you take on more complicated waste and uh, sort of do it in a more resourceful way with materials that you may have available but this means developing skill of getting familiar with the tools of understanding the if i can the biological or the physics of uh, you know the composting systems and then you are able to step in adjust for climate adjust for different types of waste and adjust for more limited space i think yes absolutely uh amog if i can just ask you to run a couple more polls and then maybe amar can get back into his flow which we so rudely interrupted Pune, my, I mean, another area, Pune, Amar, that we can get to after these polls get over. See, I think one of the most challenging things I still coming come back to is how do you convince your society, and how do you convince the individuals within your society? Uh, not all of us are charismatic, well-informed, excellent communicators, and yet there are many people I'm sure who are, you know, extremely convinced. of the importance of composting um there is a new poll that amog has put up please uh, you know also respond to that uh so perhaps you can just give some thought once the polls are over to whether you feel there's anything you can add as advice to those people you know tricks that you've seen work perhaps okay we'll end the poll now uh, punam amar perhaps yeah so uh, 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 what apart from the things already uh, mentioned karan i think just keeping at it we've seen uh, some of our customers i uh, mean amazingly being very patient with their uh, societies they use whatsapp groups these days really well uh, uh, we've seen the whole world's been quite whatsapp and uh, Uh, and every community has this group of association as well as every uh, body uh, which is on them and usually gated communities nowadays they have these apps also that everybody is on i think sharing best practices over there for, especially for segregation of waste so repeatedly so that it's on everybody's face and uh, those apps also allow associations actually to uh, uh, kind of uh, scrutinize who's not really managing waste well in the society and kind of penalizing people as well if, if people want to go that route uh, that those are the things that we've seen also work uh, and then uh, like i mentioned before using uh, or enabling the children in the society to be change makers and going from door to door and running this whole campaign is is, is another thing that we've seen work then on important dates like you know there are gatherings that happen around independence and republic and when i say gathering i don't know how much of it is going to happen now that there's uh, social distancing uh, let's see how the independence day this time goes but usually we have, we see that in in those times people engage with each other a lot so getting to get everyone together and talking about the importance of uh, doing this and it's just it's basically like any other thing that you do convincing is hard it will require repeated effort and being in the face of people and not being afraid basically i'm beginning to think that perhaps we should hand over all the other stuff to the kids also <laughs> since they seem to do a better job with us in this regard but great so uh, uh, amar is there some other stuff that we stopped you short from that you would like to share or uh, not really i mean this is okay, about it i have it. a question there yeah. is there is a question from um, shalki mishra and she's asking that instead of putting instead of putting the waste in um 
in a container how about we dig and drop the wet waste underground especially in communities that have open garden space what are some of the common challenges in doing this uh, so that's a that's a typical form of pit composting uh, uh, some of the challenges of doing that of course are maintenance uh, when you have a pit that is dug into the ground and you're putting wet waste into it every day uh, and putting more browns and carbon in it maintaining it and turning the pile every day because the amount of oxygen that actually goes into the pile will be less so you don't want that it becomes uh, uh, an anaerobic process without oxygen and then in that case it starts smelling uh, so if it is not maintained and it and it requires hard work it will start smelling and that can also lead to rodent problems in and around the area uh, where you are doing the pit composting which again it uh, like uh, I, i think the question before if you feel you have lots of land and uh, you can do it safely at some space which is uh, at a very convenient distance from people's homes uh, you can do uh, a pit composting but if if you again live in a tighter knit society i would uh, recommend not to and and anyway when we talk of metro cities i don't think pit composting is a luxury that people can afford over so there so the pit uh, even if you want to do pit composting like amar says if you do it in a slightly rural setting it's fine but please make sure that you make three pits you will get rats yeah. if you are putting food be prepared for that but make three pits you fill one pit then you fill the next pit and then you fill the third pit by the time the third pit is filled this one will be ready you can't do it with only one pit okay i think also as you said in limited spaces urban settings the danger of somebody you know getting into that pit unintentionally especially kids or animals uh i think that creates a new set of challenges uh itself so all, uh, a little about perhaps you know how you can go about deploying composters in uh, other cities like uh, i know that you are based out of bangalore and i know that the agas are for example available across the country but perhaps you can explain how it works in terms of a Uh, apartment complex that would like to adopt it in say delhi just as an example so, so uh, as in uh, as a business model delhi dam uh, has presence across 17 cities across the country uh, uh, and we have outlets in different cities for example delhi you mentioned we have more than eight outlets that are working in different parts of delhi and by outlets we mean those are representatives who stock our home composting products in those cities and they also get the communities there to start composting with the agas and so in the select cities we also have a capability of actually doing the installations ourselves and getting people trained and uh, and also doing visits later on to check whether the composting system is working well uh, if you order composters from say delhi dump we will we actually send it from bangalore to your city but we'll get our nearest partner to come to you install the units speak to you and also uh, if possible or if that is what we decide on initially also do visits to check on if it is going well and send out reports to you on the process as well so that way you you can check our uh, uh, website or reach out to us uh, in that whatsapp number that i had mentioned before and we will be able to give you the nearest partner that is there closest to your city that you can speak to and engage with uh, but as like you mentioned current as far as uh, delivery is concerned it's possible throughout the country we have uh, i think communities from shillong to delhi to uh, calicut to mumbai doing composting right now so this is pretty much spread out so i think we have tanvi who's raising a hand perhaps we can try and understand what her her question is among is, is there a way for us to enable her to speak i'm not sure we can tanvi will try and answer your question at a later point in time uh, any other questions all oh, right yeah so uh, any other questions poonam that no. you would like to address no i think that's good Yog- yogita any other questions i i think that covers most of what we've got even from the youtube questions okay excellent uh, so thanks so much amar uh, i think a great sense of how composting works in uh, you know communities especially with the aga uh i think also interesting perhaps to hear a little bit about your upcoming composter but uh, the gobble max also i think is very interesting 
in that context as a sort of a smaller scale scale more compact solution um punam thank you so much for being here everybody else from the daily dump team thanks so much for helping with the question and answers as usual amog zainab the hasgeek hasgeek team thank you for getting us working with streaming in all directions <laughs> uh, and uh, you know running this whole thing for us uh, it's uh, made for an interesting conversation uh, one last uh, you know poll which amog has reminded me we need to cover so we are just trying to understand what you feel is the biggest benefit of composting from your perspective as an individual is it because you need compost for gardening whether you'd like to contribute to keeping the city clean or so on i'll just take about 30 seconds for you to answer this before we end the session okay uh, thank you so much uh, all of you for joining us um i would say that you know community composting is an incredibly different difficult thing uh, it's difficult i think because to convince people to do something that they feel isn't their responsibility or that they feel they don't have control over is not an easy thing to do um at the same time you know as punam from daily dam bummer have been kind of highlighting uh, this problem is not going to solve itself uh, while i agree with punam saying that you know in a sense waste management is undercapitalized but in another sense we know that with large scale 100 crore 115 crore incinerators we have considerable amounts being of money being spent in perhaps the wrong direction Uh, by this i mean that instead of looking for individually managed or collectively management managed decentralized solution we keep putting all our eggs in one basket and watching those systems fail so if you can actually get your community to compost or if you can uh, you know get started and help them continue composting i think you're doing a great service not only to your community contributing not only to your life but also you know helping our cities begin to be something like we would like them to be we complain about poor quality of life in our cities and to my mind a lot of it is really around waste we see construction waste around the place which is an i saw Uh, you know we'll happily go out on a european vacation and we won't see any of that and think everything looks charming and beautiful uh, we will walk down our streets and have the smell of garbage and deal with it on an every day and we will you know then you know consider it an imposition if like european cities say for example the city of london they make composting at home mandatory so i think we have to make these choices in a more practical way we have to make them in a more thoughtful way and we have to take ownership of some of these choices uh, you know either directly through our own actions or through our influence on our government agencies and perhaps the people who make decisions for them so i hope you have found this Uh, you know an interesting session i think you know we've been able to discuss several things that you know come to the heart of what the real problem is whether it's social whether it's in terms of the tools whether it's in terms of the persistence required i hope this this, this has been productive for you and if you have any more questions please feel free to come back to us you can go to the hasgeek.com page through which you probably came to know about this session and add your question in as comments uh, a lot of the questions have also been uh, sort of uh, uh, shared with you uh, sorry i have been responded to either via zoom where we are you know connected right now or via youtube uh, in case you would like there is also the composting helpline which uh, uh, the uh, you know amar shared the number for so you can call that number and get advice from daily dump about the particular situation that you face thank you all again for joining us today and for spending your evening with us and i'll like to bring this session to an end thank you very much everybody have a good evening thanks everyone thank you thank have you have a good thank weekend you. bye amar bye